Good morning, good evening, whatever time you're listening, and welcome to episode 16 of The Practical People. I am your host, Christopher, and I am thrilled today to have the co-founder of Stan Winston School of Character Arts, not Matt Winston, because we had him on the show already, and he's also the founder of Magic Wheelchair, dedicated to bringing artists and kids with wheelchairs together to give them a magical experience, some really awesome wheelchairs. Uh, Eric Lidoff, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being on. Thank you for having me. I'm honored and um, I really appreciate you taking the time and uh, letting us pass our message on to your friends and followers. Well, thank you. It's The honor is all mine. I'm really thrilled to have you on the uh, Stan Winston School of Character Arts. That is probably the penultimate go-to place for anybody who wants to learn professional special effects. It's a really great resource where before you had to kind of dive into the libraries and the monster magazines and and then make your way out to Hollywood. Now you can download lessons and learn how to use these materials professionally. Uh, probably a game tra- changer for the independent film industry. When did you and Matt get this idea? Because you, Matt is your brother-in-law, is that correct? That's right, yeah. I can fill in that whole little story, and you just flag me down when, when you give, and you've had a little too much information. <laughs> no, we're um, hungry for I just want to make a quick, yeah, I'll just make a quick also note, to for the Magic Wheelchair side of things. Um, um, uh, Matt and I are founding board members. Uh, the founder is Ryan Weimer, and we'll get into that later, of course, but just want to tap that right in the front so that, so that it's there, so there's never a confusion. But thank you, of course, for me- mentioning the organization. We uh, are so thrilled to be involved in it. Um, yeah, so thank you for having me. Um, I am uh, Matt's brother-in-law, married to his sister, Debbie. Um, Stan was my father-in-law and dearest, dearest, closest friend. Uh, I was very fortunate uh, in all the years that we had our relationship together, uh, we were extremely close, and that's kind of rare for for in you know son-in-laws, mother-in-laws, all that kind of stuff. And to date, my mother-in-law, De- De- Matt, and um, uh, uh, Debbie's mom, Karen, she is my my second mother, or really now my only mother. But um, um, so th- that's a little bit about the history, the background of of our our family, our family ties. Uh, when Stan passed in 2008, uh, it fractured. Uh, the industry, but also our family. Uh, we were very, very, very tight, and we still are. We have Sundays together. Um, our kids, uh, Matt and Amy, his wife, they have two kids. Uh, Debbie and I have two kids. They're all the same age. Um, we we're very uh, committed to keeping the family unit together, and when Stan passed, uh, uh, it, was, it was crushing. So um, we spent a little bit of time in the beginning looking at some of his older projects, uh, films and and uh, comics and stuff, just trying to get, you know, stuff created around something that he was passionate about. Um, and none of those things really landed. And it's, you know, kind of a strange relationship with uh, uh, production companies and studios where you have to kind of give up a lot to kind of follow your vision. And it's a very difficult road and all that stuff that this is not about. But um, uh, it, it just kind of left us still with a hole wanting to honor Stan and but at the same time uh, not really finding uh, the, the the thing that was the fit um, accidentally we stumbled upon I can't even say there's some aha moment it was an accidental stumble upon uh, this connection of Stan to education he's always been uh, a supporter of giving back whether it to charities but also in education he was always interested in the future of maybe spreading some of his knowledge and um, he, he had already done some of that with the Winston effect book uh, there was a DVD uh, behind the scenes a video that was uh, produced also a follow that was the the visual version of the Winston effect book the Winston effect is a, a coffee table book that uh, he put out a few years before he passed uh, that covered the, his entire uh, film. Uh, film uh, history up until uh, T4 and um, Avatar excluded from there. Uh, Iron Man's not in there either, but but, the, but everything up to that point is in there. Um, you know, so that was out there <clears throat> a, a little bit and kind of sparked the sparked the, the educational um, fire for us. Uh, some of his passion for that. Um, We, uh, at the time, had no knowledge of getting on the web and bringing business to the web. And uh, we we knew that we didn't want to uh, have a physical 
school and web was kind of where we're at, but we had no idea how to get there. Um, we consulted with a lot of people <clears throat> and came up with the brilliant idea. I mean, it wasn't a, it wasn't a, uh, like I said, a, 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 some specific moment to point to. Um, it was a, a gradual, uh, decision of, Hey, let's, well, gradual is in months, but let's, let's get into education. Um, and the, the, the most obvious point was online. Um, <clears throat> and the school is, as you said, it's it's a premier resource uh, online to to have access to Hollywood professionals that are working in the industry that have worked on every uh, amazing title you can think of going back, you know, 40, 40 years, but also currently, uh, you know, working on every every new project out there and, and, and can can share the knowledge of what it's like as a professional here in Hollywood to um interested people all around the world it's not just the independent filmmaker um, but it's artists from everywhere and educators uh, that dig into the content now as a show i'm obviously an advocate for practical effects but i've also been very adamant about saying that i'm not against cgi or using computers as a tool i do it myself all the time and uh, you guys also don't limit yourself. There's a lot of practical, there's makeup, there's animatronics, there's puppetry, there's gore effects, but you guys also teach how to design on computers using uh, 3D digital programs. Have you found that the school has evolved <clears throat> and found new ways to kind of combine the technologies or advance both the technologies? Uh, so there's <clears throat> multiple answers to that. There are already in existence a uh, plethora of incre just incredible resources for doing what you're talking about. We have some of it. We have a few uh, because they're friends, you know, they're friends, professional friends that that we want to do lessons with cover a few of those techniques. But it's not our core focus. Our core fo focus is practical effects. And like I said, there are some great resources out there to learn digital drawing. But, you know, it's the digital, the digital side, and I'm going to go back to the positive side, but in education is very difficult because it's always changing. Um, so we can teach a technique that's still relevant from 35 years ago, uh, still relevant today, and also teach techniques that are um, uh, new techniques from today. Uh, the issue with teaching the online tools is they're changing all the time. Software changes, updates come in, brushes are added all that stuff and you have to keep re recreating, pushing, pushing, recreating. And, and it, it's, it's kind of difficult from an education standpoint um, to grow the library when you're constantly having to uh, bring up improvements from something you've already, already taught. Um, we do that, but it's not as quick of an escalation. Um, and there's plenty of companies out there doing that, so, so the resource is there. Um, but, but to the, the positive and mix of the digital to practical, uh, I mean, that goes back to, to Stan championing this uh, in the very, very beginning of, of, of the integration. Um, Jurassic Park was one of the biggest films that integrated uh, digital and practical, and he was a fan then. Um, it, 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 I'm sure, it was one of the the reasons why he was interested in creating digital do digital domain with uh, James Cameron, uh, which they did. He, he was one of the founders of of DD, and um, of course, a, a major digital company that's still around today. I believe they're still around. Um, <clears throat> and then proceeded on with building Stan Winston, Stan Winston Digital uh, on site at Stan Winston Studio where they were doing digital work um, back on fan the first Fantastic Four. They did, in Stan Winston Digital, the um, the Invisible Girl on, I can't remember the actress's name at the moment, um, uh, but they did the work for the Invisible Girl, the Invisible Woman, whatever she was in the show. So the, the digital and practical dance is what is so crucial, and that's the thing that is lost in, in today's filmmaking. Um, we go beyond filmmaking in our education because we're really – um, about arts, arts education, but we are, our core is film. Um, and, and that is a frustrating thing to watch. So uh, there is a lot more film that's happening in practical, and there's a lot more blending happening. Uh, and that's the most important thing. So we have followed that philosophy with the education. We have a blending of some of it, but the majority of what we do is on the practical side. Um, as you said, it's, it's, it's puppetry, it's mechanical, it's, it's design, mold making. We take you through from concept to performance. That's an excellent answer. I, I, you also brought up something that I have noticed, and you said it's not all just filmmaking. 
uh, practical effects have really made their way into a lot of theater. You have things like uh, Walking with the Dinosaurs, and I think they branched that out into the How to Train Your Dragon live show, where people, where before something like a full-size T-Rex would only be possible on a movie set uh, and experienced in a movie theater, now people are getting an interactive experience with uh, effects like this, whether it be puppets, oversized puppets in parades or dinosaurs in a thing like Walking with the Dinosaurs. Um, where do, what are some of the other areas that you've seen what you do branch out into? Um, one of the exciting areas that we're poking into is the whole AI, artificial intelligence stuff. There's some edu there is a pro <laughs> an educational uh, track that we've been working on for about a year. I don't know if it's ever going to happen, <clears throat> but those are some of the exciting things. You know, taking uh, um, uh, their medical, their medical artificial intelligence stuff. So, uh, for medical students, there's uh, there are these infants that are created so that they can uh, resuscitate infants. You know, work work on and 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 uh, um, and practice on. So they're not working on cadavers and they're not working on obviously real babies wow. um, there are these animatronics that are created this has been going on for <clears throat> a number of years now they, they have them from uh, infants up to full-size people uh, we've been working on a course dealing with some of the skin um, for that industry dealing with some of the veins getting some material through there and uh, th th it's very it's very experimental and, de and in development and it may never happen but it is a uh, it's an interesting route for us it's just as an example of something that's outside of um, outside of the standard film, but like you said, uh, um, conventions, cosplay, uh, uh, puppets in puppets and animatronics in in live uh, um, parades. There was something that one of the uh, one of the guys on our social media shared the other day. You might have seen it. It looked like a hundred hundred foot tall. Um, a bull or something and there was something riding up to I mean it was massive it was it was eight, uh, 10 stories high it was walking wow. through a and thousands of people below it I mean that's the kind of stuff people are using they didn't use our techniques but that's what they're doing um we've had uh we've had um uh uh sorry see you after lunch we've had um uh uh, some people inquire about building full size dinosaurs in um, the Middle East uh, and sending some teachers out there to do that, um, wow. just to go to the larger scale for their own either museum or personal experiences, and um, uh, just trying to dig into some obscure places. But but the 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 most fun for us, no, I shouldn't say most fun. Something we're working on building aggressively is the outreach to educational institutions, uh, high schools, and universities. Uh, it's been a few years. We're in many many of them around the world, and we keep pressing. <clears throat> pressing that approach. We feel that we can, if we can uh, introduce people at that stage, uh, while they're in, you know, middle school and up, um, we have an opportunity of, of building not only wonderful films and practical effects, but, but, uh, the use of practical art, uh, all over the world. Um, so that, that's our, that's our mission right now that's in terms of outside, outside reach. That's fantastic. And it reminds me of, um, I interviewed one of your teachers actually i've interviewed him several times he's a great interview shannon shea and he the best has the philosophy of and he even wrote like a little i don't know what you would call it like an uh, uh not an opus but you know he, he wrote a little thing about working with your hands and the importance of working with your hands and that that was his message was get out there get your hands dirty get them into something and i think that is something that um, I was actually just having this discussion with uh, I was doing a little parent teacher conference for my older daughter. Um, we, you know, do a sit down and go over her curriculum and that sort of thing. And she's doing really well. But we, we did get into the discussion of getting off of your phones, getting off of your computers. And even if it's, uh, you know, we an example we used was pulling a book, a paper book off the shelf rather than reading it on your phone. It's not that there's any direct benefit that you can argue one over the other but it's just the experience of kind of getting your eyes out of the digital realm and engaging real life the materials of real life and and just having that tactile 
experience. So I'm really glad to hear that you're especially getting into the schools because I think it's in this day and age very easy for people to get so absorbed into social media and digital technology, which is very beneficial because, you know, obviously the Stan Winston school, uh, that's how that it gets to them. But it is also so important to remember my life isn't in the digital realm. My life is in the tactile world. So that's very exciting to hear. Um, and uh, are, are there any uh, new lessons that you guys have recently put out or that we should look forward to? <clears throat> Um, let's see. We are in the planning mode for 2019. We start the year off. Dutch Bahari is a incredible body painter. So he'll be in, in January. <clears throat> um, we have the one lesson that has, that everybody has been waiting eons for, which is, <clears throat> uh, 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 mold making for maquettes. So breaking down, breaking down uh, a maquette for mold making. So taking, you know, arms, the ear, getting all those parts off and mold making them. <clears throat> Everybody's been wanting that, so that, that's gonna happen this year. Um, oh, I just can't remember the rest. We have a few others, a number of them lined up, and I just can't remember the list from yesterday, but, but uh, those are the two that uh, they're at the top of my head, yeah. So I, I wanna move back in time just a little bit. Um back to kind of your own participation in this because you you don't have a broad film history yourself but you did get to work on terminator 3 i think <laughs> you were working in on the set were you like a set dresser or a designer well my background is combined i um <clears throat> i it's sort of a business background i grew up in uh, new york city in greenwich village my folks had two jazz clubs growing up in the village so all of us there's five kids in the family uh, we all grew up working working since we're eight years old in restaurants um when i came out here uh in uh, when i was 20 uh, whatever it was 22 uh i was drafted in by my my sister and her husband into the art department uh for commercials and music videos uh, i worked on four or five hundred commercials over the years wow and terminator three when i had my first son my first son um i was in the restaurant business uh, it was kind of right after 9 11 when <clears throat> everybody's business kind of took a dive mm -hmm. it was a very tough time for the country uh we survived for a bit and then I had my first son, and it was like, okay, got to go back to work. And that's when I went on to Terminator. My, um, my brother-in-law was the production designer, Jeff Mann. Um, he got me working in the art department, and it was just had nothing to do with Stan. It was just one of those <clears throat> awesome things that I got to work on a Terminator movie with Stan, my father-in-law, and my brother-in-law. I mean, it was like, <clears throat> it was the coolest thing, and that was about a year of my life. Um, um, <clears throat> so there is a lot of uh, background in the industry, uh, not in special effects, but in the production of, of content. Um, I was, a art, art director and, uh, on set for all those years. I worked on set. That was, that's my favorite thing to do. So, um, even on Terminator three, uh, did a lot of set dressing, but a lot of on set work also, cause I, I just love it. So, uh, the, the whole, uh, I, I finally remember the, um, and I don't know if we're getting off track, forgive me, but That's in right. Terminator 3, <clears throat> there's the scene where the crane is going down that street, wiping out all those poles and killing all those cars. My brother-in-law designed and built that whole thing down in Downey. I mean, that is all fake, all built, and all blown up right there. And I got to, I, not only did I hang the fake uh, uh, telephone wire, I got to watch the whole thing. I was there uh, during the whole process of it. Bill Clinton visited the set. Really? See Arnold, because I think that was pre-governor, and he was thinking about it. I mean, dude, it was an amazing experience, and and Stan was my father-in-law, so I had this weird like <clears throat> working and doing my job. But I go hang out in his trailer with him because he's my dad, you know. It, dude, it was it was great. Terminator Three was an incredible once-in-a-lifetime experience. I have not worked much harder. I worked really hard on it. But anyway, so I, I do have the so-called film background um, from spending all that time on set. Um, but just not in, in, in special effects, but, but in, uh, I was a prop master. So it was dealing with all the stuff, you know, it's like we were doing our own effects uh, on sets and puppeteering. And so I was doing it, uh, just not, um, through shop. It was a very unique experience doing commercials in the nineties 
um, and 2000s. I hope but, you uh, got a lot of good pictures. From... I do. I have some great pictures. I did, I did uh, one of the last I was looking at recently was a, a thing we did with uh, Meatloaf. And I did the videos with Michael Bay, the original videos down in Texas when he did his comeback. But then we did a follow-up you know, right kind of before I left the industry and I was looking at the videos and he's doing some mock thing of his performance. Yeah. Yeah. I had a lot of fun. Um, did a lot of great, great stuff in the industry. Yeah. Just, just not, you know, in the shop, uh, doing, doing special effects stuff. I have one question about meatloaf. Yeah. <laughs> Will he actually do anything for love? <laughs> well, he said, I heard him sing the song a lot. That's all I can say. So. <laughs> all right. But he won't do that. Yeah, you won't do that. That's the one I worked. That's we were. That was the one. I remember that's, that video well too. That's that's the Michael. That's the one we worked on at the castle in uh, Hollywood. Over that castle is over there. The Magic Castle. Uh, no, no. There's some historic site over down in town there. Yeah. Anyway, getting to do that stuff. I mean, we shot one of his music videos, so called. I mean, those were multi multi million dollar videos with Michael Bay, and we were down in Texas, and I ended up in one of those um, one of those little lawnmowers with the propeller on back and you kind of uh, take you uh, i can't remember what it was called ultra, ultra glide what was it ultra lights yeah i mean when, you only get to do that when you're like on a set and you end up shooting there and like hey guys want to go up and so yeah I, I got to have a lot of fun it was great anyway hey, that next, is education yeah i think that the, personally speaking when i uh directed my first feature uh, it was in Texas as well, and it was a very small feature, so I had a lot of volunteers. And I remember how much fun it was for me, not just because I was directing my first feature, but there were a lot of people coming in to volunteer who had never been on a set before. And I was getting it's the same thing. You could see how excited they were because they had never got to uh, work with materials like that, you know, whether it be, you know, sometimes they would just be like taping up paper to, you know, flag off a light or something like that. But then there were um, puppets that I had created using some of the techniques I learned from Stan Winston School of Character Arts <laughs> um, that I had attacking actresses and I would tell them, okay, you know, you're going to get behind, you know, this thing, you're going to pull on this cord, you're going to, you know, do this and uh this thing's going to move and it's going to look like it's attacking this actress. And they were just like all there. And I still like uh, years later get messages going like, I still think of that. And it was like the, the most fun. Pardon one second. Sorry about that. My phone was buzzing behind me and it was just distracting me too much. That's all right. I'll edit that part out. Um, so, now that you've created this uh, quite an impressive library of these classes, uh, I'd imagine that you're also seeing some really cool stuff kind of come back at you in that way. Are there things <clears throat> that you've seen as a result of your school that you look at and, and just go like, wow, that's taking it to the next level? Like, it, it, What has the, the feedback been like? <clears throat> um, that is the reward. Obvious. I mean, that's the greatest reward. When we get emails, you see on social media, wherever it happens to be, we get stuff sent in that you know from our pro projects they've learned. <clears throat> it's an incredible reward when we have created something here. I'm sitting here in the studio, uh, and it gets out there to some somebody, some creative somewhere. Uh, they build it, uh, and it comes back with a thank you or uh, anything. You know, just like, hey, look what I made with 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 your help. Uh, that's, that's the most incredible reward. So yes, of course that happens. Um, what I could think of, which I guess is a, is a full wrap around everything because they, they have been <clears throat> involved from the beginning. Uh, and he's somebody that you may be interested in speaking to for one of these. His name is Jeff Watamora. He's a teacher educator up, uh, in Visalia in, in Santa Cruz. Hope I get, hope I'm not getting that wrong in Santa Cruz. Um, that he's at El Diamante high school. Uh, they are the first adopter of Stan Winston school into an educational institution. So we're going back many, many years now. Wow. <clears throat> and Jeff has stayed involved from, for all these years. Uh, they have not only built amazing projects, which, uh, the one I'm going to reference, which you might've saw, saw at Monster Palooza last year. Uh, there was a troll with a whole, um, with a whole castle stuff on it. And the troll was walking around and it had this amazing elaborate, 
I don't know if you saw that. It was walking around Palooza all, la- all last year. Uh, those are students uh, at El Diamante that build through the program. Um, but what's remarkable, and they've been doing now for a few years, is uh, they build magic wheelchairs also. So not only through us have we brought this educational um, avenue to creativity, uh, and they're using it, uh, they are doing charitable work and building, uh, which again, I know we're going to talk about ch- uh, these costumes for these kids, uh, through our organization, Magic Wheelchair. Um, they also come down, uh, they were just here. Some of those students about three weeks, four weeks ago for one of our live classes, and they will be auditing one of our classes in January as well. So we stay tuned in with them, but they are, and there's multiple educational institutions like that. That, that use us in that way, uh, but they're the they're our one of our pride and joys because they're so involved and and have been committed from the beginning. So I would say that that is a full circle impact, um, and that's what we're trying to achieve. You know that that would be great. I mean, if we can wrap kind of all of this thought, you know, take this training, build what you want, and then maybe build a chair, and, and that's wonderful. It's, it's it's that that's the stuff we're that's what we're here doing this for. Um, you know, there's no Ferraris packed out parked out back. I mean, this is. This is about uh, passing Stan's legacy on. Um, we all know that when he passed, it was nearly the end of a lot of stuff. Um, there was a lot of champions that had to pick, their, pick themselves up. The guys at Legacy FX who had to restart um, under a new name and, you know, ADI, you know, Tom and Alec and Howard Berger and just all, everybody in the industry had to really like, okay, practical effects and and it took a few years for things to come back around but we've all seen the the recovery and it continues to recover the recovery of practical effects and filmmaking um but you know that's that's our whole mission here is to is to pass this education on so people can keep doing this stuff it's you know i i'm glad you mentioned that with the passing of stan there there was kind of a there was a hit to the industry because it happened at the same time that CGI was kind of becoming used more often and becoming better quality. Uh, and Stan was really one of the few celebrity effects artists. There was Stan, there was Rick Baker, there was Steve Johnson. You know, I remember being uh, glued to the television anytime a uh, special would come on about behind the scenes, the making of. And they were the ones that would usually be interviewed. Later on, Tom and Alec would be interviewed because of their work on the Aliens franchise. But one of the things that I've also noticed, and like it's not really about this, but it's something that I am happy to see, is because of the Stan Winston School of Character Arts, you've gotten a lot of these other players' names out there. Now they are... I wouldn't say celebrities in their own right, but they there are a lot more um, people who recognize by name a lot more of these artists and recognize the individual work they've done. And as a result, uh, yeah, they've be, themselves have become more sought after. You know, now people know who Jordu Duchel is. Now they know who Steve Wang is. Now they know who Shannon Shea is. Um, and that is kind of that's exciting to see because it, it it gives people not only more role role models to look at, but also mm-hmm. understanding that there's specialities. There's you know if you want uh, miniature effects, you could go to like a Fawn Davis, or if you want a real skill in sculpting maquettes, there's George Duchel, or if you want um, you know costuming. I mean, I've, I'm not block, I'm blocking on costuming names at the moment or fabrication. Uh, Amy Wetzel, Amy Wetzel, Ted Haynes, um, Don Dininger. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, you know, or fabrication, you know, people know the difference between these things and they know that they can kind of look towards certain names <laughs> for their uh, their particular passion. I have a passion for miniature effects. So I've, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm trying to get Fawn Davis back on the show. I interviewed him once and the file got corrupted. Uh, so my Fawn Davis episode, which was excellent, got lost. But, you know, he had uh, great stories about miniatures and also working on Nightmare Before Christmas and Stop Motion. Stop Motion, the Kyoto Brothers, you know. So you you have all of these specialist names and it's kind of created a community. I, I would go so far to say that things like Monster Palooza wouldn't be nearly as successful or uh, viable if it wasn't for the fact that, you know, more of these names got out there. Bill Bryan, 
is another one. I love seeing his work. You know, he did with uh, Steve Johnson with the plastic bags. Um, it's just, I don't know. I, at this point, I'm just gushing about, you know, what this Well, I, no, I, I, I'm, I'm proud of <clears throat> you mentioning that. Uh, Casey Love is somebody who <clears throat> really understands that as well. Um, and I'm going to wrap this all in. When Stan, you're talking about Stan as a celebrity. He was a freaking celebrity. I mean, <clears throat> We would go to uh, uh, restaurants. It, they all around Hollywood. You get the table. You get the thing. Anything you wanted. This did not exist. This is pre-internet. It was <laughs> remarkable. It didn't matter where we went. This dude, like people knew him. Um, we and were loved so him. By the way, I just and want, loved him. I want to note this because <clears throat> everybody, every effects artist I know that ever worked with them is especially true for Tom and Alec uh, of Studio ADI. Um, you know, there's a twinkle in their eye anytime they talk about Stan. They absolutely love the man. And I'm sure if anyone were to say a bad word about Stan at a bar where effects artists were, there'd be a fight. <laughs> so just want to put that out there. But I that's interrupted. Kind, Go ahead. Kind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, tr true for my feelings as well. I feel the same way. Um, uh, uh, we, 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 we revel in this idea that Stan would be blown away by social media the, the what he he was a character he wanted to be an actor originally so the fact that we would be able to do things like arnold schwarzenegger is doing now he does a lot of really wonderful influential stuff <clears throat> but just that great content stan would love it to be able to show stuff i mean this is incredible so he was a star before that <clears throat> we were fortunate uh we we hit things kind of happened right when facebook didn't have any blockades they were allowing you access everybody you wanted to access um, and you're right. At the time, nobody was on social media. The effects guys, um, Jordu, of course, and, um, he had a name, um, and, and Steve Wang. People knew of them, uh, but but on a different way, as you're saying. I would agree for everybody. Uh, internet changed their lives. Um, but there's, you know, the, the Jamie Groves, the Ted Haynes, the people that weren't at that name recognition. Um, and you named a bunch of them and there's, you go on our website and you'll find them and you got, and everybody's listening probably knows them. Uh, they weren't, they were sitting in the shops doing their thing. And there wasn't even a concept of let's get on Facebook, let's do this, let's make some noise. Um, and what just, and Instagram as well, what accidentally happened is we did a lesson. Um, we put, took photos and videos, uh, promoted it on our social media and it went crazy because this stuff wasn't. There, what, this special effects platform, I mean, we were like 10 years in now on, on social media. There was not this, even then, this level of special effect images and videos and things going up. So, so you know, uh, Chris Swift is doing a lesson and all of a sudden he's a star. And what started happening is uh, John Ailes would post an Instagram and they would get 5,000 followers. Uh, and that's how a lot of these guys built their car audience. Again, Casey Love, I'll say, is one of the guys who's very gracious about about passing that that understanding on. I mean, his his platform grew so large, and he was able to just go work for himself and do what he wanted to do. Um, Simon Lee is another one. He was a brilliant unknown artist, and by and again, this is nothing we did. We're showing their art, uh, but we had an audience and still have a growing audience that's rabid for it. So thanks to their wonderful art and us, you know, putting some education around it, uh, they got tons of eyeballs. So um, it did, and it was very effective. Uh, and I'm proud of that. It doesn't come up a lot. We don't speak about it, but I'm very proud of 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 the secondary careers that that we've been able to um, provide. And I hate to say provide because it's their work. We're not providing. We provide a platform Foster. and a way to make it work. But yeah, um, yeah. So so for for Matt and I and the and the whole Winston family uh, to be able to uh, provide a, a revenue stream for these artists that were sitting unknown. And for the most part, are still unknown. But but like you said, do have now their own platforms. If they want them, they have them. Um, and a lot of them did grow, and, and we're very proud of that. But um, um, the social media thing—you had said something. I forgot the other thought I was going to throw in there. Uh, there was something else about social media. I oh, should oh, oh. Oh. Monster Palooza. <clears throat> it's very kind of you. We we've been we've been a supporter of theirs from the beginning. Um, yet yes, the. The, I just hate to ever take credit for anybody's work. Elliot is a badass. Uh, he's promoted the crap out of that. Uh, and we're very happy to be involved uh, from an early onset. And yes, we're very instrumental. We did lives from there before everyone was doing them. We brought our entire production studio in there. And, and, I, and I like to think that we did have help a little bit. So um, 
but thank you for mentioning that. And I just want to always like to say that, you know, we're part of a, a, a bigger, bigger machine. And, and we happen to have caught things at the right time uh, with social media that, that is different today. Um, although we have a lot of power, everybody has this power that have large platforms um, because of the advertising angle. Uh, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter and Facebook have throttled everything down. It's very hard to activate your users. You have to pay to access them. And I don't even know if people know that, but we have 1.7 million followers. We only access less than 1% of them without paying for it. Uh, and we've already acquired those users. And that's the same on every platform. And it's extremely unfair. Um, not that I want to make a complaint fest out of it, but social media is the way of business. And when they put the, and the advertising could have happened in a way um, that didn't do that. And back to Patreon. That's what you were talking about. Are you on Patreon? I am on Patreon. Yeah, that's that platform is amazing. We heard one of the uh, CFOs speak uh, last week at a conference. Um, some truths about the company financially, but where they're headed. But they're doing the opposite. They're giving everything to the creator and they're keeping 3% or whatever it is for themselves. And it's a nice relationship. And I hope that they find success because I do think it's quite unfair uh, what these social media platforms have done. We've paid to acquire the audience. Now we have to pay again to access them. And it's, 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 not, it's not right. But yes, we, we, we have a lot of fun doing it. It's one of the things um, I, I'm, I'm super active in in the company uh, is our social media, and, and I love it. It's, it's addictive, and I have to stay out of the news feeds, um, <laughs> which I had started this summer. Um, and I've still effectively been able to manage, um, oversee, oversee it, uh, but, but, but the news feed is, is torturous. Um, it's a very dangerous, uh, ugly place, and it creates depression, so I'm glad to be free of it. Uh, uh, but I, you- I do love social media. I, I should point out to people listening that the Stan Winston School's website also has its own uh, group that you can go in, and post your work and uh, talk to other artists and ask questions. And uh, it's, so it's, a, it's small at the moment. I participate in it myself. Uh, it's not active like, you know, if you go on Instagram or, or Reddit, Reddit or something like that. <laughs> but it, right. it is it's good in the sense that people are there for one reason only, and that's the art. So if you want to go in there and get advice or show off your work or ask a question or, uh, you know, anything else in post, uh, I think there's a general. So if you find like a cool tutorial on YouTube or an interview with a, uh, a special effects person, you want to post it and, you know, you can do that. So it's, I'm glad that you guys provide that as well. And I hope that that grows. Yeah, um, the admin over there, that's our forum section. They can uh, access it <clears throat> by going to the website. It's under community, and they'll find it. Uh, they'll cl- click you over there. Our forum admin, Chris Ellerby. Do you know Chris Ellerby from VexFX? Um, I don't know him personally. I've you know exchanged a few comments with him in the group. But... The most wonderful, sweetest, nicest man I've ever met. <laughs> um, but he's also super brilliant. He's a great artist. Uh, he hosts his own shows on a bunch of different platforms too and building and doing things and he's he's wonderful but he is our forum admin <clears throat> he's always accessible as you said you've had some some communication with him so um yeah not only <clears throat> not only is the uh, uh, are the resources there from past stuff but if you want to start a new discussion and get some help with a project uh, get some advice uh, Chris is there uh, so thank you for mentioning that. Um, and that's the same for every platform. If anybody reaches out on Instagram and a message on Facebook, on Twitter, any message, we're there on everything. Uh, Balaz uh, and Dimitar are our two social media admins, and they are uh, on top of all those questions of anything comes in anywhere on any platform. Hey, how do I do this? They may send you the form. They may be able to answer it, but somebody will be there to engage. Blaz is uh, wonderful. I've, I've spoken with him many times, especially when I was working social media for ADI. Very accessible. That's right. Very enthusiastic as well. He really loves this stuff and, and is yes. happy to be a part of it, which is the other aspect of Sam Winston School. I, I don't think uh, there's anybody that is uh, a part of your guy's company that uh doesn't want to be there I, I you know it seems like an ambition to uh be a part of it i know at the time when i was working social media for adi man that was like the best you know it's like this is 
it's like getting to jump in the the big kid swimming pool after being in the kiddie pool for too long you know it is it's a great way we we spend a lot of time on the computer like the entire the entire team but you're looking at really cool images and stories it's a little different than looking at whatever i mean if you're selling picture frames no offense to my brother <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, I mean, yeah, I agree. It's it's fun. Uh, we have an archivist. Uh, that's who I just said uh, bye for lunch. Uh, Eric Rose. He was running archive over at uh, Fox Studios. He's now he's an artist <clears throat> and does his own art. Now he left, but he just started a week ago. And I'm pointing that way because that's where the archive room is. And he is going through starting a very long process of digging into the rest of the archive. So wow. we will be digitizing uh, and digitizing more photos, more videos. We have tons of it. So whatever has been out there uh, that people have seen over the years is all the stuff that was digitized for the Winston Effect book, which is available on Amazon. That's the, the, the history of Stan Winston Studio. Um, you'll see all the photos in there. That's the stuff that everyone's been seeing. Uh, there was a batch that was digitized uh, there and a batch of video that was digitized. But there's still thousands of hours and thousands of photos. So we are now in the process of um, digitizing the archives uh, completely. Wow. Uh, and, we will, and we will continue and begin and continue to uh, crank out uh, new, never-before-seen uh, footage. Uh, we have just started three months ago ramp ramping up our behind-the-scenes releases again. Uh, we did a Predator release, we did Instinct, and we just did Batman Returns, uh, which are uh, all up on YouTube, and there are blogs on, on the website about it, but those all have fresh fresh new behind the scenes videos from those projects. I got to uh, say, by the way, yeah. you mentioned the Batman Returns ones with the King Penguin costumes. Uh-huh. That was really a joy to see. A very kind of, you know, it looks simple on the surface the way they designed those, but they were so convincing and so fun. I really did. And that's a short video, but for anyone listening, go to the Stan Winston School and and check that video out. It's a hoot. Thank you. So. Thank you. That that uh, it really is. Uh, unfortunately, <clears throat> Debbie Carrington, the the performer in there, passed away last year. But she was she was wonderful. Same with the rest of the the, the performers. Um, um, yeah, it, it's such a great uh, puppet and mechanical design. And then you get the makeup it was brilliant. I mean, that movie. The movie was fun for practical effects, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, I, it left an impression on people. I mean, I think uh, the Catwoman was so iconic that uh, no one's been able to beat it. You know, like they've tried different incarnations, and it just, uh, you know, it, it hasn't had the lasting impression that the original did. And right. uh, I think Danny DeVito was so impressed with the makeup, he's still saying that, yeah, I'd love to come back and play the Penguin again. That'd be so cool. I just found, because when we were putting that together, I found <clears throat> two photos <clears throat> of him at the studio, at Stan Winston's studio. And I think Tim Burton's there, too. And he's, he's looking at um, a version of him, you know, that, that was made there. I don't know if it was, uh, I don't know what it was made for. And he's just laughing, and you can see he's laughing hysterically at this version of him. It was such a great photo. Uh, we're going to get it up uh, uh, soon, um, but but we pulled that out the other day. Great photo of him just enjoying enjoying the work. So I did not know that he would reprise that role, and that is pretty freaking cool. Uh, I hope he gets the opportunity <laughs> to. So we mm. keep mentioning Magic Wheelchair, um, but we haven't really dived into that yet. Uh, this is a really cool project, and I apologize for assuming you and, and Matt were the ones that started it. I know you're you participated in a lot of the projects. These kids are, uh, you know, they they. I understand, you know, they're they're wheelchair bound. They don't get to you know go run around and play like a lot of regular kids do and you guys are taking their wheelchairs and turning them into star wars vehicles turning them into mythical creatures uh i think i even did i see a mad max fury road one <clears throat> yep yep uh you know the mad what, max was sick that was great that I, well they're <clears throat> all awesome i mean and some of them they're not just like dressed up wheelchairs some of them have like uh functions they you know blow out smoke or have moving parts like this uh you know it must be a real great experience how does how does a, a kid uh get to have a magic wheelchair how does this work uh how to how to get involved magicwheelchair.org uh, magic wheelchair was 
uh, founded by Ryan Weimer. He's a dad up in um, Oregon, uh, now a dear friend of ours. <clears throat> it was founded four years ago, but really in his garage many years before that when he built his first costume for his son. He has a few kids with, um, with uh, a disease that has them in chairs. Um, they... Unfortunately, these kids <clears throat> that have this particular disease um, do not necessarily live long lives. Mm. Uh, some of them can. <clears throat> we have a, uh, a, a team member on Magic Wheelchair. She's the uh, head of fundraising, Christine Getman. Um, she's in her 30s. Uh, so it's not, it's not, it's not a, I hate to sound crude, a death sentence, but Ryan does put it that way uh, because he recognizes that, that the kids could potentially um, not have long lives, uh, which is why it was so critical for him to expand beyond his own family for these gifts. So <clears throat> he um, had been building chairs, costumes for his kids just every Halloween with zero experience. He's a, uh, a nurse at a juvenile, um, uh, you know, prison uh, institution. It's a, it's a tough life. He's a giving individual. He works the night shift so that he can uh, provide for the kids. He needs, you know, medical benefits and all that stuff. Um, and he does that by working his butt off in, in what, what I would say is probably not the most positive environment. Um, and he is the most positive guy. So he's probably the right guy for the job. Um, and on his spare time, he would build for his kids for Halloween. Uh, he, his son Keaton wanted to be, um, uh, the dragon from, um, how to train your dragon toothless. And Ryan was kind of stumped at how to get that done with the skin, the material, and all that stuff. And he had just been browsing around the web and stumbled upon us um, and stumbled upon a course that uh, Ted Haynes was teaching, uh, foam fabrication, when he was building that, the T-Rex. <clears throat> awesome one of our class, yeah. Awesome class. Um, and that kind of like sparked for Ryan. He sent us an email, you know, hey, I got my kids, my family, and told us the whole story. And we all <clears throat> sat around our meeting and wept and were like, oh, my goodness, what is going on here? Got him on the phone, uh, immediately brought him into this class that we were working on, which was the Kaiju build. It was a 10-day in-studio build with students here in California. We built two Kaijus, you know, full-size Kaijus out of foam and all sorts of stuff. So we brought him into that educational experience online like we do with all our students uh, that were joining from outside. Um, <clears throat> he met the entire team. He met Ted Haynes, who became his mentor. Um, and he, you know, watched and watched the class like everybody else and then went home with Ted Haynes' help and built the most incredible, <laughs> realistic toothless that his kid um, wore that Halloween. Uh, and that was that was our our step into this. Um, he needed help with a Kickstarter, uh, and we unleashed our audience on the first Kickstarter so that we could start building more of these. Um, Ryan was super motivated to keep doing this. Uh, Matt, myself, and a few other people were there to help him fulfill his dream. So when you say founders, that's why we call ourselves founding board members. We're on the team even before the board existed, before we became a nonprofit. Um, but but uh, it's really, this is Ryan, Ryan's baby. Um, we are involved every week. We have our, our meetings every single week, every Friday. The whole team is there discussing what to do. Um, so we're, we're super involved and we love it. We give all the builders uh, access to stand with the school training uh, and access to us while they're building. Uh, but over the years now, the resource has <clears throat> grown so large in the Magic Realtor community that, that they're getting help uh, now within. But, but they do get the training from us. Um, and of course, we use our social media platform, as I'm sure you've seen during the season, to make a lot of noise about uh, the organization. Um, so uh, the impact... Again, the other reason why we do it. I mean, why else would you work on a charity because you want to give back? Um, it's kind of the thing that we enjoy doing, I guess, is, is, is helping to fulfill. I, don't, I know for myself, uh, you know, you, you try to do good <laughs> at a certain point in your life. Not that I'm a bad guy, but, you know, we've all made mistakes, and I sort of feel like i got to repent a little bit more than others. So <laughs> to me, uh, it's ex especially fulfilling uh, to be able to uh, maybe wipe some of those sins away. I do that in sarcasm. The, well, it's the, growing, it's, though. It's, it's, you know, we but, all we all do things that we, we regret, but exactly. we learn and grow from them. And, you know, <laughs> exactly. one, so, one of the things I love about Magic Wheelchair is just the, you know, to me, it, 
it taps into my personal core philosophy. And you mentioned these kids don't necessarily live as long a lives as, as, you know, we would like them to, but it's about the quality of life, you know, filling. Mm -hmm. And I think this is something that even if you had a guarantee that you were going to live 150 years, you know, it's still how you spend the time filling it with, uh, you know, goodwill, happiness, you know, having some fun because these magic wheelchairs, they're great fun. And I think sometimes we get a little too serious. We don't, you know, we, we take things too seriously. We get too business minded or, or too wrapped up in our problems and we forget to have fun. And I like that you're doing something that brings fun to these kids. So, you know, they they forget about the fact that they can't walk or that, you know, I, I don't know how aware their parents make them that they may not live as long, uh, probably something they don't want to focus on. But, you know, just I imagine that seeing a kid's face, for the, you know, when they see what's been built for them for the first time, you know, based on their their parameters and their what they like. I mean, that must be a wonderful experience for everybody. Yeah, the the um, <clears throat> we just delivered 30 chairs during the week of Halloween. That many? Uh, we'll, we'll, wow. Yeah. And we'll do probably 80 by the time the year's up. Um, and that's exactly what all the volunteers experience when they go to deliver these. <clears throat> you have kids that um, in these chairs, and they're not just wheelchairs. They're usually an electric wheelchair. <clears throat> there are many that are in strollers, but you know, people don't look at people that are different in a normal way. Um, so these kids are pretty aware of their situation. They're aware of how kids treat them. They're aware of how adults treat them. Um, um, and when they put this costume on, it all goes away. <clears throat> and the parents cry, and they see all these kids run up. Everyone wants to take pictures with their kids. Um, and these are the truths. The truths are that the parents and the kids, it's kind of tough. Forgetting the disabilities, the social impact <laughs> unfortunately, is not kind to people that have a struggle of some kind. And this changes that. Um, and you see it every single time. The costume goes on, and the kid lights up, and he's riding around, and he's going to be in it forever. It's not just a Halloween. That's why we build Beyond Halloween, uh, because we give, we give them, around, give them away all, all year long. They ride them around the neighborhoods, uh, and it gives them an opportunity to not be that kid in the chair. You know, We kind of feel like we don't want to discuss the kid in the chair. Um, but the truth is they're in the, in the chair, um, having an impact that's generally not that positive from society. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a remarkable thing to watch, um, the sadness of it. And then obviously the, the, the positive side where, um, the kid now comes out and, and is a star. And that's kind of the whole point. It's why we've, we've made these big reveals that way, um, uh, Ryan had, no, had had experienced this firsthand, which is where it all stems from, um, watching his kids cruise around the neighborhood in the chairs and it being difficult, um, putting a costume on and then watching his kids cruise around the neighborhood and they're a star. Uh, so that's what he did with the organization is he created a reveal idea and let's be, make a whole show out of it and, um, and change these kids' lives and the families as well. It's not just about the kids. It's, it's about the impact that it has on, on the parents. And, and you see that on every single one of these um, reveals. And for, for anybody that's interested, uh, you can go to the Stan Winston School Facebook page uh, and click on videos. There are some reveals on there, uh, but also visit Magic Wheelchair uh, on Facebook. And they have a lot of video um, and photos from all the reveals this year. And you'll be pretty blown away uh, to see. I'm actually the, <laughs> surprised this is hasn't become like a uh, a television show. You know, they do other other shows like that where they do reveals. It's you know, seems like it would be a very positive thing. But there know. has been um, bouncing over the years. Um, uh, it's television's a tricky thing. We, we, we did some some TV pitching and sold the show to sci fi. Um, which I'm not going to tell the story, but didn't end well, um, which is a lot of people's experience. Uh, and when you're dealing with a charity <clears throat> and a family brand and a name uh, like we did and now like Ryan does, it's tricky. You know, people want to make a game show, want to do a thing. And um, fortunately for the idea of the show, it could potentially happen because there's a lot of um, adversity going on more than usual in this country. So we're finding that the producers, and I'm being cryptic about it, the producers are now feeling they feel a good story more than let's make a game show out of it. 
You know, in the past, it's always been make a game show. Win like, no, that's not what this is about. So um, there has been talks for many years. Um, there <clears throat> is still something floating out there. So, so you're not far off by thinking that it would be great. Uh, we, we totally agree. Uh, but it has to be right. It's another one of those like, you know, you don't want to feel like you're selling out. You don't want to feel like you're it's got to be about the message. And that's sometimes hard to get people to, to understand when you're producing content. You know? and, and something also to add to that as well, which is something I've worked in the industry for a bit now. I have a lot of friends who want to be in the industry, but they come from other parts of the country and they have a certain idea about it. You know, and they come in very kind of naively and, and over enthusiastic, which is good. But at the same time, it's, you know, it is, it can be a rough business. And I would, uh, in my, from my point of view, you know, I would be thinking about the kids first. I wouldn't want to put the kids in any kind of position where <coughs> their, uh, their experience is being compromised for a show because ultimately right. it is about, them and their happiness first if they're you know if they, i i i know where you're coming from because you know if you're trying to do something nice for them at the same time there's someone you know shoving a camera in their face and going can we do that again you know it's not uh that's not what you want for them and that's exactly what you're explaining and those are the things that are, we're not interested <clears throat> rather not do it build it somewhere else than to break it i mean it's just not worth it uh so that's what makes production difficult um, same, same for Stan went to school. We've, we, we've had, um, we pushed that Avenue, but for Matt and I, at the end of the day, we've sat in so many boardrooms, so many meetings, so many production things. And <clears throat> you just see that, um, it's, it's difficult to protect the brand. Um, all we can do is screw up Stan's legacy. So it's, it's, it's hard for us. We have to be very, very, very careful. And when we've taken a lot of those meetings, it always starts with that. Like guys recognize brand first and if it's not brand first sorry um yeah yeah it's a you know hollywood it's it's interesting but but that's why we love doing what we do here we get to pr produce educational content um in a hollywood style way and have fun doing it and exciting and uh and hopefully um some people can learn some things and make some cool stuff i think that's a an excellent goal and excellent message well I am going to wrap it up, but we are going to come back for the post show, which will be available for my Patreon supporters. Uh, but I want to thank you. And is there anything else you'd like to add before we go? Um, no, visit, visit stanwinstonschool.com. Visit magicwheelchair.org. <clears throat> Tell people about that you want to make stuff. If, you, if you're passionate about anything, and I don't just mean the arts, but... Anybody that's passionate about anything, try to follow something that, that you enjoy doing. Um, life's not the longest. Try to do things that are fun. I mean, Stan's mission, you know, he said that, fun. We have a mission at the company, fun. I think you said it. You said it a few times there, fun. Um, try to have fun. That's, yeah. And I think, you know, Stan, unfortunately, I think he, he, was, he was taken from the world way too soon, but nobody can deny that he did live a, a very fulfilling life of, you know one that is still being comment on, commented on to this day so uh eric not many not many not many effects guys had a shelby cobra two uh harleys a ferrari the porsche Hummer. <laughs> i mean he loved his toys he loved his fun uh, he lived well, cigars, all of it. I, I had a lot of fun hanging with him. That's it was great. That's <laughs> awesome to know. I, I've you know, er, like it, I'll repeat it again. Everybody I know that that experience working uh, for him or with him, uh, you know, always had that twinkle in their eye when they talked about the experience. So, uh, Eric, thank you so much. And uh, to my audience, uh, don't forget to uh, go check me out on Patreon. Also follow my social media, and of course, Stan Winston Schools social media so if you're listening in the morning or the evening hope you have a good one and go create something <laughs>